Hi everyone, my name is Samara Dolan and this is my story. So I'm a mechanical engineer and computer science major and I am doing PMing at eBay this summer and last summer I was a software engineer with them. So what's PMing? Product manager. So like I'm actually in between engineering and business. Okay, how does that work? So the way that uh, to be a product manager, the way that it works is that I'm leading a team through building a specific product. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have to talk to other teams, um, get a consensus, get a consensus on what we need to do, um, communicate that to my team, but also understand the business metrics of what our product is working with. Mm -hmm. Communicate communicate that with my team, um, and so everything we build or any ideation that we do needs to coincide with the business metrics or like the goals or initiatives for the business. How did you get here to be a PM at, with PM um, at eBay last year, software engineer at eBay, and mechanical engineering at eBay? So, I guess we'll start freshman year when I decided what I wanted to do in okay. college. Uh, so, I initially picked mechanical engineering, um, and I picked mechanical engineering because it is the broadest of engineering. So, I can oh. literally do anything. Like, give me any industry, and a mechanical engineer plays a part in that industry. Um, so like my past internships have actually been like aerospace, healthcare, manufacturing, it's been all over the place. Um, and then like freshman year I started going to hackathons and like I started to see what can you do with coding and programming and I thought it was really cool and then it was also really easy for me. So like I could go to a hackathon as a mechie and still build something because I was able to just like understand the code and just hack, to hack and build something. So I was like alright let me start adding some computer science classes. I added some computer science classes. Um, I went to a ton of conferences. Uh, I was putting my resume out there. I went to Grace Hopper, and that's where I met. That's where I met eBay. Uh, so Grace Hopper is a conference that celebrates women in computing. Okay. Um, and a ton of companies were there, and I ended up getting a job offer from a few, and one of them was eBay. So I accepted it as a software engineer, and I was doing backend development. I'm um, similar to like how you're doing the best APIs. Okay. That that was like my whole summer. <laughs> um, and then at the, um, at the end of the summer, they offered me offered me a return offer. Okay. Um, and I'm not graduating yet, so it was another internship. And mm -hmm. um, but they said because I have because I have such a wide skill set, mm -hmm. I can pick like where do I want to go. Okay. Um, and I was intrigued by the product manager position mm -hmm. uh, because it straddles between engineering and business. Uh, and that's one of the main reasons I went into engineering because I wanted to be the bridge between the tech nerdy stuff and like the user. Okay. And I think the PM is a perfect position for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm this is my last week of my internship, and I can say that I would I want to continue the PM like okay. path. Okay. Yes, I like it. So do you um, program at all? Yes. So not all PMs program though. It's like because I have that skill set, I'm able to help build things and do my technical work. Mm -hmm. um, my team is really small, so I'm able to just like get things that they don't have time for and like help build it or fix any bugs or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but all PMs do not code. It's okay. more of like they. Some companies have technical PMs, and those are mainly ones who can code but also do the PM job. Okay. Um, but yeah, so if I were to have a, a more politically correct role, it would be a technical PM. Oh, okay. For anyone watching right now, they're like, hey, I just want to go ahead and do this. How do they start? If you want to start engineering, um, depends on what age. So if I was talking to like girls in, or anyone, everyone uh, in middle school or high school that are interested, into get, or interested in getting into tech and engineering, I would say um, the simplest thing would be like museum visits and like understanding what's happening. Well, Boston has a museum of science, mm -hmm. and so understanding what all those exhibits are, exhibits are doing, because mm -hmm. um, then you're getting into science jargon and you're like uh, piquing your interest in what your passions are. Mm -hmm. um, after that, uh, if your parents or like a guardian or someone can hook you up with uh, tech tours. So yes, yeah, so, like my brother came to Silicon Valley, he's 12, yeah. and I had like all my friends give him tours, like Google, Microsoft, yeah. Twitter, I was like, he's he's going to be an engineer, so um, we did tours of all the offices, mm -hmm. and I think that was great because it demystifies engineering, so mm -hmm. like he knows what an engineer's like day looks like, mm -hmm. what the office space looks like, so like he's not like 
oh, engineering, like cloud dream, like he doesn't understand, he, he understands. Yeah. Um, so I guess for middle school and high schoolers, it's demystifying what engineering is. Mm -hmm. Um, but then on the more technical side, definitely building your science and math skills. Okay. Um, so I actually did a mentorship and we did math with the kids all summer alongside an engineering project. So this was actually through NSBE, the National Society of oh. Black Engineers. Yeah. Okay. Um, we taught the math. Um, but on the flip side, to be honest, you don't have to love math to be in, in, into engineering. Mm -hmm. It's just another way to get you there. Um, yeah, and then if I was talking to someone in engine in uh, in college or like entering college, um, definitely try side projects. Okay. So even in high school, you can build a website, you can build an app, you can build a boat, a car, build something, and I think that will help you figure out your passion. Okay. Uh, like, cause there's so many different types of engineering. Mm -hmm. Like, there's there's bio, civil, mechanical, software engineering. There's really so much, mm -hmm. and they all have to do with building something. You're just building different things. Yeah. So uh, if you're in high school or entering college or in college now, just figure out what you like building, mm -hmm. what problems you like to solve, and then like, go from there. Mm -hmm. And then um, how to get into PMing. So uh, to be a product manager is actually kind of a new thing in the tech world. Mm -hmm. uh, Marissa, Mari Marissa Myers mm -hmm. started a um, program at Google for PMs. Mm -hmm. And ever since mm -hmm. then, tech companies across the um, uh, across yeah. All over the span are now having PMs, but she she's one that kind of sparked the fire for, for the PM position. Okay. Um, and it is kind of new, and apparently it is kind of hard to get into because mm -hmm. you don't go to school to be a PM. It kind of just have like skill sets to get there. Okay. Um, so I would say if you want to get into a PM role, um, apply to PM positions. Mm -hmm. um, there's a book called Cracking the PM Interview. Mm -hmm. And that is a good like peek into what a PM does on their day to day, mm -hmm. um, like lifestyle at work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that would be the basis of if you want to get into engineering and also if you want to get into PM. Okay, thank you. Um, how was your experience as a woman of color, like in engineering? All right, walking into engineering, I was very optimistic. Um, I didn't realize it was a predominantly white or predominantly male mm -hmm. environment. Like I had no idea. Uh, until freshman year of college. Freshman year of college, I get there and I realize that some people, their parents are engineers. Mm -hmm. um, they, they've been basically bred to be an engineer. They've yeah. gone to like vocational schools or they've been coding forever. Um, and so I didn't realize this. So I immediately felt like I had a, had a uh, disadvantage mm -hmm. because I wasn't, like there's not a lot of people in the black community that are engineers. So I wasn't like taught at a younger age, like how to, what to do, what should I probably be learning about to get there. So I felt like I had to catch up just because I didn't have the environment of engineering as normal for a black woman. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't have that. So like I had to catch up. I felt that immediately. Mm -hmm. And then um, aside from like being at a disadvantage because I didn't have all the knowledge beforehand, um, there's also, I think uh, we were talking about this earlier, but also the just the idea of having to prove yourself when you walk into a room, mm -hmm. because this is not what an engineer supposedly, supposedly looks like. Mm -hmm. So when I walk into a room, I have to somehow prove myself or like wear my resume around my neck. Mm -hmm. Like there's also that aspect as well. Um, mm -hmm. Because when people look at me, they don't automatically think like, oh, like a really smart engineer. It's mm -hmm. more of like, oh, this is a black girl. Like maybe she's in business or the assistant or what, she's lost. Maybe <laughs> she's lost. Um, but then I have to like, be super smart and like study a ton and like speak up in class to prove that like I'm here for a reason. I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So there's that aspect of being um, a black woman in tech. Uh, what else is there? There's proving yourself. There's being at a disadvantage. Um, there's like there's also the aspect of like not being welcomed into bo the boys the circle. Club, yeah. yeah, the boys club. Every like every all woman I think know about it that there's like. We're not invited to the locker rooms. We're not invited to the, the beer chats after work. We're not really invited to a lot of these things. And even if we are, it's like it's still not comfortable because yeah. like, like there's conferences that have like after parties at strip clubs. As a woman, yeah, yeah. Like there was, there was a conference that had an official after party at a strip club. And as a woman, it's just like I'm not even going to be taken seriously in this environment because all other females right now are strippers yeah. or like or are, are here to make a boost or some company look good. 
Yeah. So like, and it's yeah. Like when I go to conferences or workshops, sometimes the only reason a woman, another woman, is there is because she's wearing a cute outfit, like with branding of a company. And so like when I walk in, they're like, oh, she's probably just like a booth babe. She's probably just here to like, she's representing some company. No, actually, I'm hosting a workshop. Or like, no, actually, I'm here as a regular attendee. Um, so there's just many layers of like not being. Um, and immediately accepted in the environment, the tech environment. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big part, a big part of being a black woman in tech, and I think everyone knows, is just crashing through so many glass ceilings, yeah. but also having to work two times as hard just to get half of what they get. Yeah. Well, for like anyone watching this video right now, if they wanted to connect with you or like hear more from you, how can they like do that? Um, so if you want to connect with me, I have my YouTube channel, um, it's my name, Samira Dolan. On any platform, it's my name, Samira, so S-E-M-I-R-A-H-D, Samira D. So I would say that if you have made it and you're a black in tech, turn around and extend the ladder down. So mm -hmm. like share with like your siblings, your community, all the resources that help you get to where you are because we want to bring more minorities and people of color into tech but it takes someone who's been through that roadmap already to show the way.